Hi everybody, I'm doing a chakra body transformation session today. I'm gonna read the goals. The goals are awesome. Um, and then we're gonna get started. Okay, brace yourselves. Okay, so chakra removal to clear energy blocks. I have a really tough time motivating myself to find joy in exercise, cleaning house, cooking, paying bills. I always find ways to distract myself. I'd love to find energy to do this. I'm very aware that I have been visited by alien beings from time to time over the years, since the age of nine. And although it hasn't, to my knowledge, happened in a few years, I'm paralyzed with fear about it. I have also, quite a few years ago, experienced a strange sensation in my body where my body felt like I was being taken on a jet ride because my entire body shook violently for about five minutes. I've always wondered what that was. Although I was able to stop smoking weed after many years, I continue to smoke cigarettes and would like to quit, but I can't seem to do it. I smoke about three to four cigarettes a day and love it, but I would like to stop since now I have developed high blood pressure. Finally, I want to know about my higher self and spirit guides. What are their names? What do they look like? I'm dying to know because although I know they are with me, I can never connect. What messages do they have for me? Okay, so, so many options here. So many colorful options. All right, let me just soak it all in real quick. Okay, motivating yourself, alien beings, quitting smoking, spirit guides. Okay. All right, I'm ready to get started now. Okay. So, right now, I mean, how do I explain the way I feel? I feel very still. I feel like there's pressure coming down from above, down on my head, and then it slowly washes down. And it's putting a lot of stress on my neck here too. And there's also a sort of like, there's energy in my stomach, like very noticeable. And it seems to be interconnected with this feeling here, like a wash is happening. And I can't see anything. I mean, it's dark everywhere. So I'm just going to roll with it here. All right. Now the next thing is, so this wash is happening. And I see you and you're kind of like in a vice grip and it's like tight on top and on bottom and it's kind of squishing you. You're stuck in place, okay? So you're nicely stuck in place and it's nicely stuck. You're not being like compressed. You're not being squished. You're not being destroyed. You're just tightly tucked in <laughs> and you're right where you need to be in this vice grip and there's no moving, okay? <laughs> and I will emphasize nicely because I, I will say it, it feels very nice. Like it feels neatly done. It doesn't feel like it was done in a hurry or a rush. It feels like it was perfectly put into a, you were perfectly put into a vice grip. So you were prettily put in there. <laughs> it's kind of cool actually. Hmm. And I mean, you're actually telling me from this position I'm ready to get out of this. I'm ready. I'm ready. You say that to me. So that's cool. And I say I'm ready to help you too. And I come, I'm flying to you from, I'm just sort of watching you from afar. And then I'm flying towards you. And I just give you a really big hug. This vice grips is a complicated thing. And I want to be able to undo this so that you can be free, but there's more to it than just that. So I'm able to, you're falling out of it. You're actually kind of falling like a chess piece just falls off of a table. You're just sort of just falling um, because you're kind of like, like a stick You're You're straight. You're not like flexible or moving or anything. And so I, I do um, undo this so you are free, but, you know, you're falling. 
that's in one version of this image. The other version is I try to set you free, my hands just go through this tourney device. So you're still there. But you and I both seem to know that um, that we got this, that together as a team, we can work through anything. That's what it feels like. It's really cool. So my spirit guides are asking me, which um, image am I going to go into? Because I have to choose one of them. And I say, I like the one where I'm... I've unwound it and you're falling. <laughs> I prefer that for some reason, so I'm going to go into that. Okay, let's see what happens here. There's something about a big owl. A really, really, really big owl. And it looks kind of like, I don't know much about different types of owls, but it has like the brown feathers. Like I think it would be more like a common owl, but it's really huge. It's really magnificent. It's a really big owl. And as you're falling, what, what seems like um, you're kind of at the mercy of gravity, you're a chest piece just falling, the owl just swoops in out of nowhere and then clutches you and takes you. So it's enormous. It's an enormous owl. I feel like this is a representation of a spirit guide, okay? But let's keep watching here. So the owl tells you that even if you are falling, I'll always be there to catch you. Owl, always be there to catch you. <gasps> oh, he's got a sense of humor. <laughs> okay, so the owl will owl, always be there to catch you. <laughs> hmm. That's so cute. The owl is, uh, keeps an eye on you. So owls have a really good eyesight and, and they can spin their head in 360 degrees. So they can stand in one place and see you from any direction. So this owl is keeping an eye on you and it's very protective. So it's going to make sure that you're safe, that you're always taken care of. It's kind of special. The owl wants you to know that while you take care of so much in your life, I am taking care of you. So I have my eye on you. I have my eye on things. So I want you to feel as though you're being taken care of. It's actually really nice to feel as though you're being taken care of. Um, it, it takes off um, a, a burden off the shoulders that oftentimes we didn't realize that we had. So how many of us want to feel taken care of or an eye kept on? Just life can feel just so like so much sometimes. It's very, uh, it, it helps you to relax more. It's like, okay, the owl has got this. So I'm just going to do my human stuff. And anything I can't understand or that is beyond me or that is challenging me, I'll let the owl handle it. <laughs> That's kind of what it feels like. It's really freeing. The owl loves you very, 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 very much. It's is very noticeable. <sighs> I, wow. It's very loving. And it remains an owl here on the branch. And I'm not sure where you are in this scene, but I'm understanding the owl's purpose in your life. Okay, things are changing here a bit. And I'm starting to feel a bit of a turn in my stomach and kind of exhausted, disoriented. I've got um, some light here on my third eye. It's just, I don't know, I feel disoriented, disconnected, disoriented. So just letting this vent out. And we're returning to a a point where it's very hard to see. It's very, I mean, there's, you can't see. No matter what you try to do, you're not going to be able to see. It's just not something you're going to have. <laughs> so we're going to have to walk through the dark for a time here. And even though we're walking through the dark, the owl sees in the dark. The owl sees and guides us, guides you, okay? So you're never walking in the dark. So if you feel blinded, the owl can see what you cannot. So it is guiding you. 
This is really important that I tell you about this. Okay, oh, again, um, a bit of a wash feeling around my face and there's just a tiny little orange light in the third eye um, and it just feels uh, kind of tense or there's density in here so it feels tight um, right in the third eye area. <sighs> Okay, emotional release happening here. Okay. And your neck is tight here. This is the next thing. So I'm just relaxing that on down. It's like, here's the throat where we express ourselves, but behind the throat chakra, there's also a throat chakra. So a stress, stressed out neck is also interconnected with the throat chakra, so weird, but it is. Um, so it's very tight right here, very tight and tense. So I'm just gonna relax that on down. Okay, okay, this is, I'm gonna scooch back a little bit because this is a lot of energy moving going on. Yes, yeah, I'm just waving it around. It's coming around the back. It's washing around. It's moving. There's a lot of movement going on. So I'm just moving that out of the way. Okay, what's the next thing we got going on here? All right, your owl tells me um, just keep moving forward. So we're gonna do that. We're just gonna keep moving forward, have no idea where we're going. You have no idea where we're going. We're just gonna go somewhere. We're just gonna move forward. It's all dark everywhere. And I say, well, why don't we, why don't we walk just a little ways? And then let's stop at a point where we can take a look at um, either your smoking habits or your relationship with alien beings. Um, uh, any type of inspiration to help you feel more go-getter-y when it comes to the responsibilities of life. Um, I'm totally with you on that one, though, too. Um, but let's see what you say to this. Ah, you say, you're avoiding, you're avoiding. So you, deep down inside, you do. I know at the conscious level you also do because that's why you're requesting the session. So deep down inside, you want to work on your smoking habits. You want to, um, you know, become more of a go-getter, work on this alien stuff. But here we are in this energy space and now you're doing that thing that you would do. You, you say, um, you're always finding ways to distract myself. So you're distracting the situation here instead of looking at what we need to take care of the to-do list here, we got this to-do list here. We got alien beings, we got smoking, we got these other things going on. We got a to-do list here. Let's get started on this to-do list. You're like, you're like, try it. You're like, no, no, not that, not the to-do list. <laughs> Let's do something else. Let's go do something else. And there's like, ah, okay. So we're working on it already. Okay. So yeah, you're already um, trying to, I mean, you're talking, you're making lots of loud noises, um, you're not looking at me, you're pretending I'm not there, you're just sort of like, you're, do you're not wanting to move forward because you're not wanting to work on any of this stuff. And I just told you that if we move forward just a little bit, then we can start working on this. And you're like, no, nah, I'm not even going to move forward. And then if I don't move forward, then I don't have to work on anything. So then I can just keep doing what it is that I want to do right now. So let's see, let's see what, what, what to do next. Okay, the next thing is just simply to relax this part of you. I mean, you're even talking to the air, like you're, ta you're talking to anything and everything, even if, it's, even if it's the air, you're insisting there's somebody here. Of course, there's always somebody there in the air, but I mean, you're, you're all over the place. You're like totally not even gonna be, <laughs> we're not doing this together right now. <laughs> I'm following your, your uh, inspirations and I gotta relax them down so we can start working together again. <laughs> okay. Okay, so 
Um, as I relax you down and you're not facing me, you're facing a wall over here, okay? And then there's a mirror that you're looking at and you see a reflection in the mirror. And there's some things in your reflection that you're not wanting to look at. And you are aware of the mirror here and you are aware of your reflection and you're, you're choosing to acknowledge this but you're not knowing how to work on this because it's just another to-do thing. I say, you know what? What if we picked one item on this list? We already got to know an owl guide. That's pretty cool. What if that was the only thing we discovered today? Would that be enough? Do you put yourself down if you don't get it all done? Are you an overachiever? Does that exhaust you? Uh, yeah, you have a huge, uh, you put your head in a huge, it's black, um, it's another vice grip type thing, but it's um, your head and it's uh, closing in on the sides where your ears are. And then there's a big block, it's sort of like, um, the juggernaut he's got like a big hat on <laughs> there's like a you've got like a big hat on it's like a um a square shaped and it goes around and it's very thick as well very very thick and it's heavy and it's um way too stressful on your neck and your shoulders like it's way too heavy <sighs> it's weighing you down Man, the stress on your neck is just, it's way too much stress on your neck. Way too much stress. And so again, what's going on here, there's mental body stuff going on here. There's throat stuff going on here. There's uh, emotional gut stuff going on here. Heart, all the other energy bodies are involved, but these are the loudest ones, okay? This is hard. This is exhausting. Do you, do you expect too much or ask too much of yourself? It's kind of... You'll never be able to achieve it. I mean, an overachiever is going to conquer a lot, but they'll never come to a place where they're ever satisfied because they'll never achieve enough. They'll never reach the goal <laughs> because they're an overachiever, right? So there's a weird stress that also comes with this and expectations. And if you're an overachiever and you have these expectations, what if you're not quite achieving on the level that you define as achievable? Now you're a failure. You know, and there's so much stress involved in this. So much stress. You're not a failure, not at all. Okay. Mess. I'm, I'm, it's still venting a lot of stress here, okay? And as much as I want to take this hat off, I can't just, just lift it off your head because there's stuff we got to work on in order for that to dissolve and go away. And um, I felt inspired to tell you, hey, look, um, we're working on the first thing on your list here. Um, we're really focusing on your relationship with getting things done. Even the mundane tasks, it's still an achievement, right? It's still stuff you got to do, which you decide that you have to get this much done and you should be able to do this much, you know, and it's just like, ugh, but I have other things to do, things that I really want to do. This is so annoying. I have to do the dishes right now. <laughs> I'm with you on this. I'm totally, I, I, I fall in the same category at times. So, and one way that I deal with it is when I get annoyed that I'm doing the dishes, I actually stop, immediately stop. And I say, you know what? I'm going to put my overachiever nature into making these dishes the best I could ever make them for the dishwasher. 
and I and I actually take the scrubber and I scrub off the little cheese and the you know stuff that gets stuck there that's annoying. Peanut butter is always annoying because it doesn't wash off in water, <laughs> and then it gets on your actual like sponge and thing. So, but I put I put my heart into it. So when you put your heart into something you don't want to do, now you'll actually start realizing how fun it can be because you allowed your heart to get put into doing dishes. And it's done and over with before you know it. Um, suddenly the dishes are done. And it's like, wow, wow. And it feels brighter because you actually chose to put your heart into it instead of resisting. You didn't put your heart into it. You just got it done and it was annoying the entire time. So if you just put your heart into it, now it's um, an achievement. You achieved it. <laughs> and it feels good to achieve it. Just something that I, I do to help myself with these um, same issues. But let's see. I'm telling you this, that we're working on the first thing on your list. And we're going to put our heart into it. And we're going to mute out anything else that we feel we have to do today. We're just going to mute it out because we're going to put our heart into this. We're going to put our heart into this one. Wowzer, your juggernaut hat is all, um, it's, it's literally all around you. You're in the juggernaut hat, like you're, it's and all the way down to your feet. It kind of keeps you cocooned in. Why though? Why? Why? Why a juggernaut hat? Why like this? I mean, how are you going to get anything done with this? I don't even know how you're going to move from day to day with this. This is just, um, I mean, is it like programmable? Do we tell Juggernaut um, bodysuit and hat what we want to accomplish? And then we can get the, the computer technology stuff done, but anything else, <laughs> we'll, we'll wait on it because it's just too much weight. Because um, it does weigh you down. Still trying to make sense of it, but they aren't going to tell me. We're just going to work, continue to work on dissolving it. It's going to make you feel so much lighter. Okay. Okay. Just moving energy here. And I'm also going to, I've got like a third hand. I'm just touching your heart while I simultaneously am doing this. <laughs> I'm just like bouncing this energy around just to kind of break it up a bit and just bouncing it around like that as it makes things feel really good. And then I'm just going to put my hand on your heart here and bring in a lot of light because that also makes things feel good. <sighs> yeah, too much on your mind, too much. <sighs> That's also going on here. <sighs> You're trying to block it out too. So other people have no idea what all you got going on in your mind. So Juggernaut Hat also um, keeps what's going on inside of you in, in your little Juggernaut world. <laughs> so nobody knows. Like it keeps it from like anybody noticing or knowing about it. So it's like contains it within you. So. My, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. <sighs> this juggernaut thing may take us a little bit of time here, okay? As much as I just want to just take it off, it's like glued to you, all right? You're super glued into it. So I just have to keep doing energy stuff and talking to you, keep sharing love and light and encouragement um, to try it a new way, try new things. Um, you, you're a go-getter. You are, you are a go-getter. So um, we could try life in a new way. We could put our heart into it, and it could be fun. We can just do the. We can do some new way of being and put our heart into it. It could be fun and challenging, and, the, and then conquering the challenge feels really good. And now we're a trophy. Like now we did it. We are the trophy. We are the triumph of overcoming that challenge. You know. It can feel really good to challenge yourself and then to prove it to yourself every day that you are challenging yourself today and you did it again and you did it again and you did it again and you did it again. You conquered the challenge again and again and again and again and again. You have so much to be proud of. So much to be proud of. 
they're starting to work on the cough or <laughs> the cigarette thing here. <sighs> so that's starting to become a part of this juggernaut thing. <sighs> Is uh, putting your heart into um, doing the dishes and putting your heart into quitting smoking and putting your heart, heart into all the different things clean the house and paying the bills and exercise. It's the, it's the stuff that is the right thing to do, right? Um, so why is the stuff that's the right thing to do the stuff that needs to get put on the side burner, you know? <laughs> we'll wait on that. The stuff I, you know, that's a good idea, it's good for me to do. I'll just put that over there, you know, like the laundry and the dishes. <laughs> it can go over there, you know? But we got to start putting slowing down, right? And when you slow down, you actually get more time in a day. It's so weird how that happens. Now all of a sudden you're making your bed every day and you're wiping the hair out of the sink and <laughs> you're doing all this random stuff every single day and it's like, oh my God, look at all the stuff I did today. And I just did it. I didn't even complain about it. I just wanted to do it. It just made sense. I'm still putting all of this inspiration in your energy field, okay? They're all like little, um, the little good voice inside your head. It's like, uh, that's what I'm doing for your energy field right now. So <laughs> you're like the sponge absorbing all of these good ideas, all right? And I'm inspiring you. It's really hard to let go of something that you like to do. Um, Especially when it comes to smoking. I, I mean, I'm not somebody who's going to say it's it's a good idea to smoke or not smoke because we lo everybody loves to do something, okay? You know, some people love to ride BMX bikes and, you know, sometimes they break their leg, sometimes they, you know, break their neck or whatever, but then they get back on the bike and keep doing it. Um, is that a good idea? Yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, it's life. It's life. You get to do life however you want to do life. It's your life experience. So um, you get to make your own choices, you know? So now to take something that you love to do, um, and then now you can't do that thing, it's like, it just feels wrong, you know? It just feels like something is now being taken away from you. We're, we're going more into that direction now, okay, with cigarettes, but we're, we're going to go deeper into that. Simultaneously, we're still working on dishes and things like this, okay? <laughs> we're doing two at the same time. Okay, I'm going more into the cigarette uh, direction. <sighs> hmm. Wow. I have no idea how to describe what I'm feeling out just yet, but I know I will have successfully described it once I'm through this thing. And I guess for starters, you're really still connected to human experiences. Cigarette will pull you into the human world. Dishes will pull you into the human world. They're human things. They're human experiences. So now when you participate in human experiences, they can be really relaxing or nice, like smoking, or they can be annoying, like having to wash dishes, but you have to do it, you know. Um, but it, it, the, both of them are keeping you in the human world. They're keeping you more human. And what you're actually signing up for right now in your life is uh, to let go of a lot of human human sides of you. To um, you could call it ascend, ascension, human ascension. Human ascension is you're still you're still totally human, but you're you're opening yourself up to more um, to more awareness and expansion of self love, and self love. Um, is also works with enlightenment, compassion, unconditional love, extraordinary understandings that are really hard to digest sometimes, but then you get through it and now you're like, wow, I'm a whole new person. I mean, ascension is opening the third eye um, to awareness about yourself, about the human world, about the choices you're making, um, and coming into a more harmonic balance with those choices. You're actually um, signed up for this right now. You're doing this. You're, you're processing. You're actually doing this right now. This is a responsibility that you're working on right now. You actually are working on it. So 
That's a cool thing. And you're working on it to take off all this juggernaut stuff so you can be more exposed. You can more be more freely, um, be more free, right? You're not in the vice grip stuff. You're actually legitimately free. Not just a chess piece falling out of the vice grips, great. Um, but now you're actually a movable, free person, you know? You can, you can let your spirit sing and be human at the same time and be okay with it. Be okay with stuff. And welcome more of the fuel that is truly igniting you. Because the cigarette is now giving you high blood pressure. So the cigarette is not truly igniting you. And maybe the cigarette brings peacefulness or relaxation, um, but it's not real, you know? Um, it's a tool to get you to where you want to be. But when you can find that you can do it all by yourself, now you don't need this friend anymore. Because the friend is actually not helping you. And we can see that because it's creating um, physical imbalances now, right? So the friend, we thought the friend was a good friend. The friend was a great friend, but now I actually don't need the friend anymore. But I'm having a hard time letting go of this friend because it's a friend. Um, but the friend is causing significant um, issues. So I need to walk away from this one. But you have the power to find that same experience that the cigarette gives you without the cigarette. The hard part is allowing your body to transition away from the tool to being completely you without any strings attached. You're not a, the puppet anymore with the cigarette now pulling on your strings. You own yourself and you decide what you want. And you decide, you know, you can have the, the experience all by yourself. So, and to be honest, you, you're going to conquer a lot, just so you know. Because I, I really feel confident that this stuff is going to come off of you. This juggernaut stuff. You're going to get uh, to the other side of this. And you're going to see a reflection in the mirror that was always there. That you were avoiding a bit. Because it is so bright. It is so beautiful. And maybe it's asking too much of you. To be, to be that. Um, to your ego. Right? Because your ego now has to go through the process of being broken down and reborn as you make life changes. And that's hard on ego. But when you choose to work with ego instead of against ego and say, Hey, ego, guess what? I'm going to quit smoking today. Because you know what? We can do this. We can do this. And ego says, Oh my God, no, you're not. You're not going to do that. You smoking is a nice thing. It's a nice experience. You don't need to live your life without it. And you say, oh, oh, I see. So you're really sounding kind of like an addict because addicts do this. Addicts say, well, they get, create excuses as to why they need something. How come nobody gets addicted to water? How come nobody gets addicted to things that really matter? <laughs> well, we get addicted to things like cigarettes, right? Or, or ice cream or coffee or all this other stuff. <laughs> but what about water? When is somebody going to have a water addiction problem? <laughs> you know, that's what I want to hear about. I want to hear more about that. <laughs> you could be the first. You could put that on your achievement list. You can do that. <laughs> put your heart into it. <laughs> Let's see, let's see what, what you say about this conversation. Your ego says, thank you for letting me know how you're feeling and the choices you're wanting to make. Because now you're actually acknowledging that you're wanting to make those choices. And now that you're acknowledging you want to make those choices, you can start making them. And that you can start slowing down and working with the parts of you that are struggling with it and resisting it because you're going to have emotional reactions and that's the withdrawal. Okay. You're going to have your mind's going to convince you you need to do it. And that's the withdrawal, but you're strong and you're a really amazing overachiever. So you can be like, I'm not giving into the withdrawal. So I'm going to get as emotional as I need to get. 
and I'm not going to give in to the withdrawal, so I'm going to get as an irritated and angry because you're going to have a lot of weird reactions. Or you can you could do something else here. This is another idea that just came to mind. So you're ready to say, I can do this. And no more cigarettes. All right? This, is good. this probably sounds very extreme, but it, we're planting a seed here um, in order to get the ball rolling. Okay? So now, whenever you're wanting a cigarette, you're going to go for a walk because you got it on your list of things to do as exercise. And walking is so easy. And it's going to feel probably annoying and time consuming at first, but literally 10 to 15 minutes of walking every single time you want a cigarette is going to help you emotionally, mentally, and it's going to change your habits around. It is, and it's going to give you more energy and it's going to give you more gusto and it's going to work in your favor. And now juggernaut stuff is coming off because now you're clearing your mind as well. You're feeling more balanced. Your blood pressure is getting leveled out. You're now proud of yourself. You can't believe that you did it. You know, you see what's on the other side of this rainbow. You get to do whatever you want to do with your life, right? But um, there's always other pathways. And what do those pathways look like? So there's always in some other side of the rainbow. Everything is a rainbow pathway to another rainbow pathway. <laughs> but it looks pretty good on the other side of this rainbow, you know? It's looking really good. So let's see what else you say. Hmm. Okay, feels like I need to go down in here deeper. It's like a vein or root. And we're going to go down into it more. My, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, you store so much heavy energy, like, it, on your head. It's like sitting on your head. And then there's a lot of stress on your neck. And now this is happening. <laughs> it's like, dang. And I'm beneath the, the smoking surface, okay? We're going to go deeper than it. Let's see what's beneath it. And I know you said that you smoked weed before you smoked, you know, got in, you let go of that and you just smoke cigarettes. But let's see, this might be this weed location. Okay, what's down in here? Okay. It's definitely junk all over in the, the way. I mean, what does it feel like? Um, leaves, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of leaves growing on the sides of walls and ceilings and floors. But it's all sort of like, um, and they're dried. They're like dried. They're not um, like jungle leaves or anything with moisture. They're actually dried and they like, um, I'm walking through a pathway of all of this and it's just sort of brushing across my face and my shoulders and everything. And I'm walking through. And they're like um, hands or arms that are like touching me. Um, and I'm walking down a hallway of all these leaves that are just touching me. Like hands and arms. <laughs> like reaching out to me. But they're all dried up. What is... is There's something hidden down in here. <sighs> something hidden down here. And just a minute here, I'm still fine looking for it. All right, it just keeps showing itself to me as here's so we have the hallway, okay, and then slightly beneath the hallway, there's a little white sphere that is glowing. So it's beneath the hallway, and I'm trying to look at it, understand it, and all I feel as though is I have lost something that I can't find, and I'm looking for it. So the energy of this space is creating this experience, okay? Where is it? Where is it? My third eye sees it's it's in the form of this white sphere glowing beneath this floor. But the part of me which is also playing on the role of you, um, I'm just sort of like walking through this sort of back and forth in a way to try and find it. I know it's here. I know it's here. Why can't I find it? Why can't I find it? Okay, where is it? Where did I put that? Where did I put that? So I keep d having this experience in here. And I just can't think straight. I just can't think straight. And I can't 
figure it out. Okay, this is going to get a little bit worse before it gets better, but it seems like something is growing, um, actually bulbously coming. The, the walls are starting to clo get closer, and they're bowing um, towards me. So the walls are, the ceiling and the floor is all bowing towards me, and all these leaves are starting to disappear. And it looks like blue, okay? It's just blue. I'm in a blue space that's like I'm getting kind of tucked into it. And it's creating kind of an hourglass uh, hallway, shaped hallway. <sighs> this is very overwhelming on my heart and my mind. Very overwhelming. And there's a lot of energy stored behind you. Um, it's like um, a lot of, it's like you're putting this behind you. This is uh, stuff that you've put behind you. Like um, um, I've moved on from it. But yet it's still attached. It's still there. It's still there. And an idea comes to mind. You can think about this. It's not necessarily saying this. But um, I find that when you participate in an experience like um, smoking pot, okay? It gives you the, the gift of altering reality for a time. So it gives you a new experience. It allows you to feel... Um, a different experience, right? Than life experience. And there's something about, but why would you need that? And what is it about life that is missing that you would need an escape from it? Or you would want your body to feel different, or your mind or your emotions to feel different for a time, um, instead of just allowing life to just be. So you can just be yourself, and that's literally the awesomest you could possibly feel or be. Um, and you can actually experience the spirit realm more clearly. You really can. <laughs> Some people don't believe me, but it is true. You really can. And all you're using is yourself. That's it. So there could be an avoidance, you know, the mirror. And there's a lot that goes on beneath the surface of your conscious mind and choices. And um, it could be another tool to avoid you stepping into this more profound reflection this more spiritual i mean there's a all i see in the mirror when i keep looking in it is this bright glowing light and it's you and then there you are the one looking in the mirror and you're just kind of like looking down like um avoiding it and so this space kind of reminds me of the the you that's uh, sees this brightness and is avoiding it um well, why in the world would you want to do that, you know? Why does anybody ever want to avoid, avoid love and their true higher self? You know, like, why would anybody want to do that? It, because we just get carried away with other things. We get lost in our own pathways, in our own minds, our memories. Um, and then we just do that. But when you put your heart into, you know what? I'm ready to find out who that glowing person is in the mirror. I'm ready to find out who that is. I'm ready to discover who that is as myself. So now when I am now that, when I'm looking in the mirror and that is truly who is looking back because I am that standing here, what is that person like? What is that person aware of? What is that person capable of? It's uh, two different identities. It really is in comparison to what I'm stepping into and what you have on the other side of this juggernaut stuff, okay? We are still breaking it down. You see how thick this is? This juggernaut stuff is all your chakras. So breaking this down is the ultimate chakra body transformation for you. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you that much. Okay. You aren't wanting to let go. And this hallway is still reflected of um, like weed smoking, kind of, um, it's becoming, looking like, um, in the shape of a joint now, and I'm sort of rolled up inside of it. Um, but I can't, still can't access that one thing. I still can't get to it. <sighs> All right. Okay. I'm on the outside looking, looking at this now. And it's just like a big blue joint is what it looks like. But it looks like it's made out of rubber. It's a lot of emotion here. Motion. 
Okay, what co what happened before weed? What happened before that? So now there's the white sphere um, is beneath the surface of this. So if we keep going downward, we got cigarettes and we got weed and then we got what's down here, you know? Um, what is this? It's like a part of yourself that you, you lost along the way. And even now I'm like trying to grasp it or reach it and my hand just goes through it. And it kind of emanates a childlike feelings, okay? Like a childlike self. And I'm going to take what I'm just really quickly picking up on. I'm just going to take the childlike self um, out of that. And then I want her to stand here with me. And then we're going to look at this white sphere and we're going to talk and we'll figure this out. Let's see what we got here. She is so hidden. She's just... She's so hidden. Why are you so hidden? Okay. Because the responsibility, she has responsibilities. And um, she, she doesn't want to right now. <laughs> she doesn't want to right now. And she sees that, uh, you know, here's weed and then here's cigarettes. Like, that's a responsibility. And it's not just a, it's a responsibility to yourself, um, to loving yourself or your body in a new way. Um, it's a, it's, it's a chore, you know, it's quitting is also a chore. So the chore is also like a responsibility. Now you have a job to do, another job to do. So again, and she's hiding from this. And I, I don't know why, but out of nowhere, I just hand her a joint and then she smokes it. And then she, she knows that as long as this exists, then she doesn't have, um, the responsibilities are reduced. There's something like the feeling of responsibility is reduced, is better way to put it. Because um, the feeling of responsibility becomes like real, a relaxing thing. Like um, there's a relaxing experience going on here. So the relaxation alters the way um, responsibility feels. And I say, are you going to smoke that all day or what? Are you going to come take a look at this pearl thing? I really want to know more about this. She says, yeah, when I'm done. And I say, the mirror, my friend. When are you going to, when is it time? When is it time? When is it time to look in the mirror and step into that reflection? When is it going to be time? <sighs> I will say that um, that you moving on from weed was a really powerful choice because it gives you more access to all of your senses and they're your senses. They're not yours plus weed senses. They're actually 100% your senses, okay? And now cigarettes, um, moving on from that, is going to give you access to even more of your senses. Not your senses plus cigarette senses. It's all your senses. It's all you. And for the first time in your life, you're going to know who you are. Just you. As you are. You know, it's reminding me of... It's, 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 there's a parallel to this, okay? Reminding me of something in my own life. So I, I used to dye my hair for a long time. I would dye it really, really dark brown, okay? And um, for like 10 years... And uh, from like 18 to 28 or something, okay? <laughs> and then one day comes where I say, I don't even know what my natural hair color looks like. So I decided, I see, I didn't even know what I look like naturally. I had no idea what I actually naturally look like. Um, I didn't even know what it was like to, how my natural height was because I always wore tall like shoes, okay? So I got to know who I really am. I stopped dyeing my hair. I actually stopped straightening my hair. So I got to know what my hair is naturally like. It's natural color. My natural height. So I got rid of tall shoes and started wearing flat shoes. And it was like, 
It was a whole new feeling, a whole new experience, and I loved it. And for the first time, I'm getting to know who I am. Without the shoes, without the hair dye, without the straightener. Me as I perfectly naturally am, as God created me kind of thing. And it changes you. It really does. So you don't even know what you are truly like until you let go of cigarettes. And then you're going to find out who you really are just as you are. And it's going to bring so much to your rainbow pathway. It really is. Okay. All right. There's a huge shift between the heart and the mind right now. I mean, it's huge. It's very huge. I've almost cracked this juggernaut costume. I'm almost, I mean, it goes, it's like the hat goes down. <laughs> so I've almost cracked it and crumbled it off here. <sighs> okay. Okay, it's almost there, it's not quite there. How heart's still circulating. Okay. So you don't, so deep down inside of you, as this is cracking off, you have no idea what you're gonna look like or who you're gonna be kind of thing. Um, that's why ego resists change because now you're going to be a new person. You're going to be reborn. So ego is going to say, but th this isn't you. And you're going to say, well, I know, cause I don't really know who I am either without this. So we're going to work together ego and we're going to be okay with it. And ego is going to say, why are you doing this to me? And say, it's okay ego. And then you're going to hold the ego and you say, we're going to go for a walk now and we're going to get some fresh air and we're going to find out who we are and you will find it gets easier and easier and easier and ego is going to say wow is going to start getting on board with you and start supporting you things will get easier <sighs> already I, I see the girl more clearly and there's literally nothing in her hand um, there's no joint um, here. I'm actually picking her up and I say, you don't belong all the way down here. I'm going to take you up. You know what's strange is uh, as I see her up here, and she literally, um, there was nothing in her hand, but there, there was obviously something because there was a man standing here and he takes it out of her hand and then he smokes it. And then all the while, I was like, okay, I, it's all happening so quickly. So I'm like literally just grabbing her and taking her out of here. Say, it's okay to move on now. It's okay to move on. So I just take her. We're just going to let all of that stuff go. There's literally nothing more that we need to discover here. It's just all images playing out more of themselves. And she smiles at me, so I take her up to a much higher place, vibrational place. And she smiles at me, and she actually turns into just energy and light. So she just kind of disappears in the light is kind of what it is. But she's literally not there anymore, okay? So she's just totally come full circle here. We've come full circle. So her role, her place, and her meaning in all of this for your deeper essence is completely complete. And you trying to find yourself is in the choice that you're wanting to make. It is going to bring yourself back to the surface all by itself. Now you don't have you haven't lost anything at all. Because all it is is making a choice and then you discovering who you are without that, you know, without that other um, experience. And, okay, so let's see here. Feels like a new message is coming in. Alright, I'm supposed to do some igniting work here with your crown and your third eye some like they're showing me this so all I can say is there's a lot of red light coming up and out and it looks like a giant red ruby um, above your head okay 
but it's very soft red and we're going to really brighten things up here and your crown is full of ideas and those ideas are circulating in there and then the third eye is also coming up with it's all in the mind it's all the mental body region they're all working together with higher wisdom higher awareness seeing beyond all that stuff You are, um, as I'm igniting all of this, they're showing me a new scene that um, you're actually coming um, to a ladder and you're, you're on the ladder and you're kicking some goop off of your foot and there's like a big goop lake, like a black tarry lake that you just came out of and you're literally climbing this ladder and the goop is off your foot and now you're like really bright and exposed, like we can see you <laughs> and and uh, you're climbing the ladder and I say, no, no, you, you've you made it, you've made it, <laughs> you've made it, let's let's create like a, like a you've made it place so you can ch relax and enjoy what it feels like to know that you've made it, you know, you did it. I really feel strongly you're going to be able to do this. I really do. You are, you're laying down here and there's some grass and you're just t catching your breath. It's, it's takes a lot. It's take, um, it's taken a lot out of you to get this far, but the sunlight is so gentle and beautiful and you're taking it all in. Man, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're turning into a new person. That is very obvious in your energy field. So I can tell that you're turning into a new person, which means you already have turned into a new person. So you will get there, okay? And don't worry about how long it takes. Don't worry about that because you have all the time in the world, all right? And just relax and take it easy. You will get there. You already are there. That, that's obvious. That's It's really cool when I can tell somebody that. <clears throat> Everything's getting quiet right now. And we're back to... <laughs> we're walking in the dark again. And now we got Owl, Mr. Owl looking out for us. Here is what it's like. And we've come back to the beginning and we're walking through the dark. And Mr. Owl's like shaking his head. And he says, nope, you're walking through the light. And the owl says that um, when you feel blinded by life, that's because the light is so bright. You're not in the dark on what's coming next or what to do next, or where to go next, you're actually blinded by the light. And the light is guiding you at every turn. And so trust that you do know the way. Because you actually do know the way. Even if you can't remember here, you're doing everything right. So to shift your perspective, you're walking through the brightest light that it's ever been, and it's so bright that you can't tell where you're going because it's so bright. You really like that. You do. You're shedding the skin. I mean, again, it comes back that you've you've already you you're turning into a whole new person and you've already done it. Um, and then they're showing me time, you know, there's past, present, future, but it's all happening, you know, um, but you're shedding and letting go of a really thick skin, which is like the juggernaut material is just like blump. It's like all shedding off. It's like the thickest skin ever. <laughs> you are doing that. Wow. You're, you're like totally brand new. That's what you look like. Like a brand new person. Okay, so there's something else here. Just let me wait for a moment. This is a pretty intense energy shift, so... There's some exhaustion that's coming with it. And the exhaustion is really hard um, to breathe through. And I feel also weighed downward like this. But your third eye has gotten quite large and noticeable. 
And I say whenever you feel like just slowing down, then just slow down. You get to t do life at your own pace. Life isn't, you has got to go, got to go, got to go. But it can be at your own pace, whatever pace you want that to be. You're still holding on to a bunch of stuff. And this feels different than um, these two that we're working on here with just motivating yourself and uh, letting go of the, the cigarettes. It feels different. This also, what this has to do with is also looking in the mirror and seeing what is there. And this may have something to do with the other part of what's on your list with the alien beings. They're not saying, but it's d a different feeling to it. And it's about finding yourself and looking in the mirror at who you truly are and being ready to do that. You're obviously ready to do that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have requested some assistance with this. And so even requesting assistance says, I am ready. You just are asking for some support along the way. This support is going to help you. I know it will. There's so much more to discover here about you. There really is. And I'm telling you, the shroud is coming down. Then the cigarette is like, once that's gone, I'm telling you, the shroud's going to come down and you're going to see a lot more. And you're going to feel different and you're going to open up in a way that you haven't recognized yourself to be like this before. That's the way you feel. That's what your energy field is saying. I am going to become this. I'm going to accomplish this. I'm ready for this. I already have done this. Your energy field is saying this, okay? <laughs> it's like a, like a legit reality going on here. Okay. I got all your chakras. I've got them all with the seeds planted, okay? And they're all listening here to each other. And they're all ready to work together. <sighs> okay. That's everything. Thank you so much for this experience. Hmm, I really like this. <sighs> I'm just disconnecting more from your energy field. <sighs> hmm, thank you for your open-mindedness to share as well. I, a lot of people will appreciate this session. Um, and for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, Please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you all for watching. I wish you all a wonderful day.